Hello everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom, my name's Colwyn Way and today I'm going to look at um, making a pen but out of cast resin so I thought we could start right at the very basics of this um, and I'm just going to use some scrap woods. We will in a later edition we'll, or later uh, video look at a little bit more complicated casting but I thought today why not do something out of bits you would normally throw away. So what I've got is some scrap wood pieces that I've cut up. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, but I just want to go over the kit that we've got. Um, I've got an old curry tin. I've got um, some mixing jars, my resin itself, some black pigment, um, and a stirring stick. Uh, we're not using pressure or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about pressure pots and all that sort of, sort of thing. This is really for the beginner to start looking at casting. So my bits, I make a lot of uh, wooden fruit and vase shapes um, and what these bits are, the corners that I've cut off pre-turning. Um, now I've added some round pieces in as well and that's just some bits of dowel just to give a little bit of a difference. What my intention is here is to um, mix up some resin um, and soak this in the resin. So I'm going to actually stir the resin into this and then put it down. Now I am aware that wood floats, we don't want to cause that to happen. So I'm going to mix it, enough resin in to coat it and to fill the voids but not to create a layer for the wood to float on. I'm also going to help stop that happen by adding another piece of timber, this is just a piece of ply, putting that on top and a bit of weight on top and that should do it. Once that's dry usually for this resin it's around about three to four days. Once that's dry I can probably get up to four pens out of this piece. They're the, the perfect length, about six inches long, 150 mil, by about four inches. Um, so it's perfect for four pens, depending on the pen that you're making. Um, and I've added enough um, pieces to give myself about 20, uh, about 20 mil, so about three quarters of an inch um, in depth once this is set. Um, I want them mixed up well, so what I'll do is I'll mix up the resin in um, this jar and then we'll pour the resin and the pieces into the big one, we'll give it a good stir up, we'll pour them back in here, weigh it down, and then we'll come back in a couple of days time and do the turning. Okay, so the resin that I'm using here, um, and one thing I haven't said of course, there's the pigment, I don't want to see the pen tube through this, so I'm going to make an opaque um, black pigment, I think then that really show off those lovely bits of timber. So we're going to go black with that one. So the resin itself is a two to one mix by volume um, and not weight. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to go, it's pretty much a guesstimate. You can be more scientific than I am, but I'm going to work on 150 milliliters. And I know that I can add a bit more resin afterwards if I need it. So 150 mil. So if I start off with 100 mil of, of resin itself, and then we can put in the 50 um, of the hardener. So just, you would be fairly... Um, accurate with this. These these measuring jars do the do the job perfectly for me. So, hundred mil is there. I've got my gloves on just to stop myself getting covered. And then just fifty mil of this one. This is the hardener. I think sometimes we can overthink um, resin and casting and all that sort of thing. All I want to do is do myself some pen blanks. We're just using up the scrap wood as well, so just, it's just quite nice. I mean, you don't have to make pens, you could do jewellery, you can do whatever you want. Um, I s did mention about some more complicated pens. I want to do um, a two-part pen with some of this burr. So we've got uh, the top section with a burr break halfway through it and the bottom section the same. Um, but we'll leave that for another another day. Let's just do our scrap wood to start with. So there we are. I've got the resin in two parts in my jar. So we're just going to give that a bit of a mix. Get that thoroughly mixed. We'll add the pigment as well. And this two jar technique is, is one usually used by um, uh, resin casters. Um, basically it means that you don't leave any of the resin unmixed if you do a two jar mixing session. We're going to do it slightly differently of course, but once we've mixed up we're going to mix in the wood bits as well. And then we can transfer, transfer back to our mould. I've used an old, um, like a curry pot, um, takeaway curry pot here, but of course there are specific ones on the market that you can go for, latex ones and all those sorts of things. Um, this one, I intended this one, this is one use really, but you could coat this in um, mold release and, uh, and and hopefully get it out one you know first go. But uh, my experience was these is a little bit tough to get out get out. So we're starting to get that fully mixed now. I'll add in 
the pigment. Pigment normally, if you want to stay transparent, you only add a tiny, tiny bit. I don't. I want to go fully opaque, so I can add a couple of drops here, knowing that I can add more if I need it. A really nice black, that one. But I don't want any transparency. That's what I said, so I'm going to have a look at it in a minute. Pretty good. You know, I think that is probably... Let's just go for it just a little bit more. One more drip. There we go. And, of course, adding this before the resin's fully mixed, it means it's... Uh, I'm just giving it a little bit more of a stir. We've got a little bit more of a mix in, so we can guarantee that afterwards we've got a good mix of it. Well, I reckon that's pretty much done. So what I'll do now, and I've already got rid of the dust from this, but I'm going to double check by tipping these pieces into my pot. There we are. A little bit of dust left in there again, so tap it out. Give them a good shake to mix up all the bits so we don't just have squares in one section and round pieces in another. There we are, properly mixed up, you can see, see in there. Now we can add the resin. There we go. Now I'm not going to scrape the, the sides too much, just in case I've got any unmixed, <coughs> excuse me, any unmixed resin on it. So now I can properly mix up these wooden bits. It looks disgusting at the moment. It doesn't look very attractive at all. But when this is cast and in one position, we're going to break through those bits of timber. So you're going to see a real contrast in colour. And make sure everything's coated and mixed up. There we are. That's looking pretty good. Now you can see the goop that's in there. We'll now pour that into our mould. Let me just move a couple of bits out my way. It's like baking a cake. You can see that I'm doing this on a board to protect the bench. Once this stuff gets on your bench or anywhere, it ain't coming off again. So do be aware of that. Just push it all down. need to do now I'm going to add that little board just to the top pop that there just to stop anything floating to the top to keep everything pressed down put a little bit of weight on it and I need to come back now in about three days we'll look at cutting it up drilling it out prepping like we would any other pen blank and turning our first pen with it so join me again in about three days time okay so Everything's nice and dry now. The the um, the resin's fully cured. So what we've got, if you remember, we um, we cast this in an old um, takeaway tub. 
Um, so yeah, if we can just have a quick look. So if you can see now, all, the, all this was, I, I, I weighed this down with a piece of scrap wood. I didn't want the scrap wood to stick to the resin because it's really, really difficult to take it off afterwards. So I just used one of my old latex gloves that I used in casting um, just to create a barrier between that and the um, that and the resin. And so now if we take it out, it doesn't always come out that easy, by the way. I have prized this out before, but it comes out clean because the inside of the plastic tub is a nice clean. You can also add um, release spray, so mold release spray as well. That will help. Or you can line it, of course, with tape, but that comes out fairly well. Because it's flexible, you can you can sort of move it to, to remove it. Um, so there we are. Now you can just see some of the um, bits of um, scrap wood coming through. It's a dark resin, so you're not going to see too much at this stage. But I'm just going to quickly nip next door, and I'm going to cut this into pen blanks. I've got three pens that I want to make today for you. Two Empress, and one what we call an Americana. The Americana being a start, a sort of startup pen, um, but the Empress being sort of the big and chunky ones to really show off um, this resin. Um, remember, this is something we've created ourselves from what would have been thrown in the bin. It's scrap wood. Um, so, yep, I'm just going to go and do that now. Okay, so that's them all drilled. Um, it sort of surprised me, actually. They're better than I thought they were going to I knew they were going to be good, but um, they've come out really nice. So remember, this is all those little uh, corners from my fruit making and, and, and scraps. We added a couple bits of dowel for the circular pieces as well. But I'm quite excited about this, and I think these are going to be quite cool. Um, this was not added to pressure pots or anything like this. This is just... Put in, make sure you put enough pieces in to not float. So I put them in, mix them up, rather than saturate the stuff and have floating timber, I just made it a big mass of wood and, and, uh, and resin and then weighted it down with a bit of wood um, and then put a weight on top to stop things floating to the top. So I'm really chuffed with that. So our next job um, is to drill those out. So I'm going to go next door again. We're going to cut them out. And then I've got uh, I've got my pen kits here. I've got three pen kits, remember. Um, two of the pen kits are, are what we call Empress pens. So they're big, chunky pens. And they have these sizes. But one of the other ones is, is what we call an Americana. It's a slightly smaller tube on those. So they're, I think, believe they're 8 mil tubes on the Americana. So I'm just going to go next door. I'm going to cut these blanks to length by measuring up um, the tube so I've got to cut them to the length of the tube or just just a little bit longer and then once I've done that I'm going to drill them out on the pillar drill and I'll come back to you and then we'll look at how we um, insert these and, and glue them up. Okay so I've just taken these to the bounds and I've cut them to length now what to do that all I've done is taken the tubes for each kit and individually just set the fence to about a millimeter longer than the tube itself and then cut the blanks uh, to size. Once I'd done that, I then took them to the pillar drill and got the right size drill for individual kits. Now, um, I can start talking about drill sizes. Uh, for instance, the Americana was 8 mil, but every kit, you just need to check out all the spec on that kit to get your right drill size because most of them are different. You will get some similarities on some, but most are different. For instance, 8 mil here, and these were different sizes. I got a 15 mil. Um, and I think 11.30 seconds, a mixture of Imperial and uh, Metric. But check out that first. There are also different lengths, so make sure you don't get confused with that. It's easy to do with, with when you're doing several kits at a time. So cut to length, then drill, and I've used an upright drill guide, um, uh, or vice, sorry, to, to use on the pillar drill to drill these where I wanted them um, drilled. Be careful when you do the bigger ones. Um, try and get them as central as possible. I tried my best on that one. It's not too bad because um, some of them are quite big and chunky. So we've cut to length, we've drilled, and all we're now ready to do is glue. We've got a few spare pieces here that I thought I'm going to hang on to those because they may come for uh, into use for other projects, maybe some jewellery or something like that. Um, so I'll put those to one side just for the moment. And I'll put the drills to one side just a moment, and we'll start looking at the gluing. Um, using epoxy resin, I, my preference is epoxy resin. Um, I've got a... a, a 50-50 epoxy resin here. This is the Z epoxy. Um, so all we're going to do is add a good amount of each. This is the 30 minute one. Um, if you're only doing a couple of bends, go for the five minute. If you're doing a bulk batch, then do use the 30 minute. We're just going to do this and then walk away, have a cup of coffee, and then come back. It should be dry. So that was the. That was our. I actually put the hardener on first. Um, I'm not sure it matters too much. So we're going to put the same amount of at the actual resin in and 
go, or the glue, sorry, not the resin. And then we'll give it a bit of a mix up. Just a little bit more working time with the 30 minute. There we are, that'll do it, believe it or not. It doesn't take this huge amount of mixing. It's not like epoxy resin. Epoxy glue is a little bit more forgiving. So, right. Just pop the stick out of the way. And I'm going to just rotate the tube in it. All right, and then we can pop this in. When this is dry, we will have to do a little bit of trimming. So all I'm doing here is just giving a bit of a twist as we go on in. Look, let that. As you push down, it sort of rolls over the tube and coats the whole of that outside. I'm going to use the other tube just to wipe off the excess. So we've got a nice clean face. Pop that there. Just make sure that's fully coated. Do the same thing. The other good thing with epoxy resin it is quite, I'm going to use a technical word, it's gunky. Okay, so that gunkiness, make sure it sticks to everything. There we are. So that's the Americana ready. So let's go on to the, the Empress pens now. These Empress pens, pens are proper gifty type pens, you know. They're real, when you hold them in your hand, there's some substance there. Desktop pen, I guess. Exactly the same thing. Just roll off the waste. Next one. There we are. So that's one Empress. We will clean out the out the inside of these, sorry, before we start. We can't get them on the mandrel unless they're clean on the inside, so we'll make sure that that's all done. So if you see any bits sort of hanging around, don't worry, you can clean it off later. So again, just a little rotation as you push that tube in. I'm not going to get my fingers filthy, so use the stirring stick scrape off the excess because so if you can scrape the excess excess off it does make it a little bit better it's easier to do at this stage that one cleanish that can go back to one side and then we've got our pieces ready to ready to dry there we are me and ben are going to shoot off now for a cup of coffee for about 40 minutes so that's fully dry. We'll come back. We'll then just sand or trim the ends to make sure they're level with the tubes. And then we'll put them on the mandrel and we'll start turning. So come back in about, have a cup of tea. And uh, come back, <laughs> we'll come back in about 40. See you in a minute. Okay, so everything's dried now. Um, probably the quickest cup of tea you've ever had. But that was for us, that was around about 40 minutes. Um, and now all I want to do really is true the barrel ends up and make sure that that material is down to the length of the, um, the brass tubes that we've now glued inside. So I'm going to put the dust extraction on um, and sand these two to square. I've put my uh, sanding table on here now. Um, you could put another piece in, so level up with a with a, an actual square to make sure you're going in square. I'm going to just eyeball it, turn it over once or twice just to make sure I'm getting a nice square edge. Uh, on the, the Empress ones where I drilled this large hole, um, it didn't go all the way through. I was just cautious of breakout. So I'll just sand through there to the tube. It's around about a millimetre I've got to sand. So um, just so you know that. So look, we're going to start off with the Americana. Dust extraction is going on. Goggles. Lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. And I'm sanding here around about around about a thousand revs so I'm sanding. Turn over a couple of times just to keep things square, keep eyeballing. So 
when you first see the brightness of that metal come through. There we go. Now I see that the camera can pick that up, but you just see the glinting of the metal coming through there now, look. Same on the other side. Is that one done? So, get back down to the exciting bit, the, uh, the turning itself. The sort of the noise sort of changes. When you start hitting the metal, the noise changes a little bit. So you'll, you'll know when you're through. That's everything drilled. So now we can think about setting the lathe up. Think about setting the lathe up, put the mandrel on. Um, I'll have a bit of an adjustment of the cameras and be back with the uh, two sets. Okay, so I've just ju adjusted the lathe. We've got the pen mandrel on here. I've got the um, compression pen mandrel. Look, so we've got that simply into the, the headstock. The tailstock center is part of that pen mandrel and it is designed to go over and down to wherever um, wherever the pen is. Um, and obviously, sand, well not obviously, but sandwiched in between uh, the pen blanks are the bushings. So if you've never turned a pen before, the bushings are unique to that pen kit. Um, like I said, like the drill bit, some you can use on other pens, but they're defined by their diameter. So the diameter matches the metal work or the, the, the bits of um, uh, pen kits. So we've got lots of different bits of metal, the clip, the nib, and all those sorts of things. This is the, to match the same sizes, but also to match the barrel sizes that you've just glued in to your kit. So that matches that side, for instance, and this matches that side. So I'm gonna assemble this as is. So I'm putting one bushing on first, then I'm bringing up my barrel, which is gonna slide over that bushing. Then I put the next bushing on to match again that barrel in there then the next bushing then then the bottom of the pen slides over the bushing and then finally that last little bushing there then we can slide the center over lock everything up and now I'm directly pushing on to um, this pen kit with the tailstock now so rather than pushing onto the bar and the pen mandrel itself we're pushing onto the pieces of, of timber or acrylic that we're trying to turn so there, that's nice and tight. 
my job now is to turn these pieces down to match the bushing diameter which in turn matches the diameter of the pen kit that we're turning so it makes life a lot easier for you you don't have to start measuring stuff we're just turning down to a given um, size which is in front of us so let's get the tool rest nice and close I want to make sure every bit is missing what we're turning okay I'm going to have the dust extraction running only because it's a mixture of acrylic and timber. I don't want to be breathing any in. I don't want the bend to be breathing any in either. And I'm also going to turn quite quickly. I want to be turning it around about two and a half thousand. And the reason really, um, this is a small diameter, so um, surface speed is smaller, is, is slower, sorry, um, close to the center. Um, and also there's less resistance, less pressure on the workpiece if I'm running faster. There is a, a compromise you have to make, and that's your safety. Don't compromise your safety for ease of turning. So if you've got a much bigger piece, you go within the safety uh, limits, or speed safety limits of that, that work piece. But here we can go fairly quickly. So dust extraction on. I'm going to start with a bowl gouge, a little quarter inch bowl gouge. Lay speed is zero. Turn the lathe on up to 2,500 revs. And my bowl gouge is going to be my rougher gouge. So I'm going to take all those corners off. If that happens, just give it a tweak, tighten up a little bit more. Start again. All I'm doing here, I'm using the bottom of the bowl gouge, almost like a skew, to give us a skew cut, 45 degrees, bevel rubbing. There we are. Now, now I'm almost down to where I want to be with the bowl gouge. I'm going to get the skew out. I'll just give us a nice finish. Get all that fluff out of the way. Let's um, go straight to the skew. I want to go fairly large with the skew. So... That's better. And like I said, I want to match the diameter of the bushings. And we're good there. Next one. good not through but we're down to round let's have a look at that see if it's done what i wanted it to look at that that's quite an interesting little pen blank there going on so now we're down to sanding so that's how quick once you've done the preparation that's how quick making one of these pens can be obviously we had a few days of waiting for the resin to dry glue to dry but turning it is just over in a few seconds I'm going to start quite coarse actually for resin. I'm going to start with a 240 grit. 
if I need to go coarser, I will, but let's just see how this 240 works first. Remember, we've got a mixture of epoxy resin here and timber. I'm still turning at 2,500 res, but I'm keeping everything moving really quickly in terms of the abrasive my fingers going to have a quick stop what I'm looking for is to get rid of any turning marks before I move on we have we're good there so let's go on so that was a 240 I'm going to jump right up to 400 I'm going to see, before I move anywhere, I'm going to see if I've got rid of the 240 lines. There's a little trick we can do, and I think we need to use that little trick. Let's go with a bit of water now, so lay speed down. Got a little tub of water here. Don't want to get myself soaked, so I'm not going too fast. Just dipping the abrasive in the water, and using that to lubricate the cut as we're going. There we are, now 600. Right, now we're going to go for our little pen turning discs, uh, discs yeah I can start going up a little bit in speed now so we're going to go through grades now this goes all the way up to around about 8,000 That was number four, so let's move on. Where are we to? I'm skipping a few. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it's not. It's me not being able to count. We are not. We're just gonna skip through the necessary to the necessary ones. So I'm on about eight thousand now. All right, final one. So this is about. I'm not sure about this, it might be about 12,000 this one. Alright, there we are. Now, that's enough with the abrasive itself, or the what we would refer to normally as abrasive. What I'm going to do now is we're just going to go to an acrylic polish. Now this is, it's a little bit like, um, like tea cut, like the old Brasso. This is an abrasive polish. So it does exactly what it says. It, it still cuts. You use the abrasive waxes, anything like that. This is the same sort of thing. It actually does a really good job of that final cut. A bit more. We've got a good mixture here of timber and, and, uh, and epoxy. It's quite necessary to do this sort of finish. This is going to look lovely. Remember what this is. This is waste timber. Things we would have thrown away.
stop and have a check to see if we're, we're ready. Oh, wow, I'm really pleased with that. That's come out lovely. Right. So that's the first one done. So what the aim is now, I'll do the other two pens. We'll speed that up a little bit. And then come back to me in a minute when we start the assembly. Okay, so we're going to assemble the Empress pen now. So look, I've just laid it out in order. So we've got the bottom of the pen, the main bit, and then we've got the cap itself. So let's start again. We'll start with the easy bits. Let's pop that, the nib on first. So hopefully I've allowed enough space there with those fingers. No one more. There we go. And then we can push everything together. Goes all the way on. And then one more than fingers down. So let's go push that back a bit more. On first. Make sure I can unscrew this. Good. I'm worried for a minute. Right all the way down, push on the top cap, grand, then we can undo the nib, slide in the insert, screw our pen up, so there's the bottom of the pen, that's the bit we actually use to write, then if we assemble our top blank just turn them around that one and then finally, on goes the clip. There we go. And that should all screw together. So we get another nice little scrap wood pen. That's the big empress. It's got a little screw lid. Let's get our other pen together. So we've got one Empress. Sorry about that. I was supposed to have two. We've got one Empress. And I've got one Americana. 
Okay. So there we are. They're quite nice. I like those little scrap wood pens. Um, just making our own pen blanks, really. I'm going to do a few more of these videos. Um, I think it's quite an, an interesting concept, and we can then sort of experiment as to what we put in. We might want to put some pine cones in. We might want to put all sorts of things in, some, some corn cobs maybe. Um, or just try other variations of timber, maybe some different colours, that sort of thing. So I quite like those. So thanks every mu everybody for joining me again, of course. I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas time. Um, if you're celebrating Christmas, if you're watching this later on, of course, you might be in the middle of the summer. Who who knows? But thanks ever so much for, for stopping by. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel and just tell as many of your friends about us as, as you can. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.